Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Council of the Town of Oakville. I'm calling the session to order now. And I invite the public to, um, to join Council in O Canada. And before we do that, I just want to recognize and thank for his attendance, His Worship, Mayor Bill Perra. Thank you for being here. We don't see you enough. All right, everyone. O Canada. And if anybody knows the new words, they're good. So, Madam Clerk, I, I gather we have no regrets for this evening. Council, do we have any declarations of pecuniary interest? Madam Clerk, I see none. However, I have a, a conflict to declare on tonight's agenda, and that is the item on the Community Services uh, Committee agenda regarding Deer Run, as, as I live at the head of that street. And uh, so, in the interest of reducing uh, the to and fro that is involved of me leaving the chair and coming back to the chair. Um, under the few powers that I'm given by our bylaw, I'm going to change the order <coughs> slightly from what we published. We'll do all of the delegations for the Administrative Services Committee meeting and the Administrative Services Committee report, and then I will leave the chair and turn it over to the acting mayor, Councillor Natalia uh, Lischina. And uh, she will conduct the uh, community services delegations and the community services report. <coughs> and then I will return to the chair, having not participated in the uh, community services report uh, that's under uh, the item that's under consideration here tonight. And I, I hope that's clear and it's intended as a convenience for everybody. So with that, uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the first of the administrative services committee? Uh, oh, sorry. I got ahead of myself. Before we do that, why don't we confirm the minutes of August 22nd, uh, regular council and regular council <laughs> confidential and P&D council meeting of September 6th. Councillor Lischina, thank you for the motion. Councillor Knoll, thank you for the second. All those in favor, opposed if any, the minutes are confirmed. Um, Madam Clerk, would you like to call the first ASC related delegation? Our first delegation is Fraser DeMoff, here to speak to item six on the Administrative Services Committee agenda, Trafalgar Park Revitalization Project. Welcome, Mr. DeMoff. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you, Mayor Burton and uh, members of council for allowing me to speak this evening about a very uh, important issue that's currently coming up to vote tonight. Uh, it's an issue that's very important to myself and many other uh, War II residents, some of whom are here tonight. Um, I'm here tonight to uh, request or um, ask that as a council you vote in favor of the fitness facility being proposed for the new Oakville Arena. I know um, some members of this council are uh, opposed or uh, leaning on whether this should be included in the official uh, Oakville Arena redevelopment plans and I just wanted to outline some of the positive benefits that including this uh, fitness facility, um, some of the benefits that that would have for the surrounding area. Um, having knocked on thousands of doors in Ward 2 
over the winter time, uh, I heard loud and clear that uh, a fitness facility is something that the ward desperately wants and it's also something that they desperately need. Um, at a cost of $32.08 for adults, uh, $25.66 for seniors, and $20.85 for students, uh, the price of a fitness membership for Oakville facilities is simply unmatched compared to private sector facilities. And when you couple that with uh, the fact that most private sector gyms have hidden fees when it comes to key fob rentals uh, or equipment upgrades, you know, it's pretty clear that the town facilities are some of the best in, in, uh, in Oakville. And in a time when we're, or the town I should say, is advocating tirelessly about the need for more uh, Oakville residents to be physically active, it seems like a no-brainer to me to include this low-cost and affordable fitness facility uh, in an area of Oakville that is currently unserved by this service. And I also want to stress that the neighborhood in which Oakville Arena exists is home to an incredibly large amount of low-income families, recent immigrants, as well as a lot of seniors who would have unprecedented access to this fitness facility uh, should you choose to include it in the Oakville Arena plans. And when you consider as well that in wards 1, 4, and 5, and 6, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they have fitness centers available, uh, who the councillors from these wards can speak to the benefits of, uh, it makes, you know, it's a smart and progressive move to include this fitness facility in the new Oakville Arena plans. So I would ask that as you consider voting tonight in which way, you, whether you support this or not, uh, to consider the ability for many residents who currently do not belong to a gym, uh, access or, or provide them with the opportunity to um, become a member of a low cost and affordable fitness facility offered by the town in Oakville Arena. Um, and if Oakville Council wants to walk the walk when it comes to having healthy, active and, uh, and engaged citizens and their health and well-being, then I will hope that all of you will vote in favor of including uh, this fitness facility in the Oakville Arena plans. Thank you, Mr. DeMott, for your information. Councillor Duddick has a question for you. Thank you, uh, question, but also a comment. First, thank you for coming out. Um, secondly, um, I, I'm glad you raised the point of uh, some of the other wards with community centers having a fitness facility associated with it. Um, as you realize, there is going to be discussions in Ward 3 on the old hospital lands, and I understand from quite a few of the residents there, they're also very keen. So it, maybe it's not so much even just a Ward 2, but a general town-wide that we should be incorporating fitness facilities and rec centers. Is that correct? Absolutely. And I mean, if you think about it as well, for a lot of residents that don't have a car, um, providing a fitness facility close to their home uh, allows them the opportunity to be able to belong to a gym, which they may not have been able to before. So, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for your information. Thanks. Madam Clerk, the next delegation. Next delegation is Chris Kowalchuk, also here to speak to the same item on Administrative Services Committee. Welcome, Mr. Kowalchuk. Council's uh, looking well, forward to your information. <laughs> Welcome and thank you. Well, I just want to come and speak that hope uh, Council is going to support uh, everything in the... Uh, we're spending the money to get the project done at Oakville Arena. Uh, I know uh, I'm uh, speaking more on behalf as a user group, someone who's been involved in using Oakville Arena basically for 30 years, one of the most con longest continuous using groups who uses it. And with West River, where we provide the, we've provided the outdoor rink, you know, with the town support at uh, the West River uh, tennis courts. And, and there for, we've had over 100 days of operation for several years and you know, staffed by volunteers. So I just hope, like I said, you know, it's budgeted $780,000 for the outdoor pad, and I know the economies of building pads, as you always build too, um, is to make sure we don't uh, chin chintz out and just build something little like a kiddie pad, because even the volunteers were able to maintain a double pad where we had a, a rink for kids and a smaller rink for younger kids, and also to maybe have some have it where it can be open to the public and not have to be booked like a town field always does, where uh, like a lot of times in the neighborhood, the, you know, people always said, how did you organize the kids? You know, how did you organize it? How did you time it? How did you set up? And they said, well, we didn't. We let them figure it out. And, and they did. And, uh, and, and, you know, and the big kids looked out for the little kids and, and you know, we, but it was because we had that facility. So, Rennie Park in Toronto is a good example of one where they have the, the rink and they have a shinny where you pay your thing and people go play it. But there's also a secondary rink that's always open and it's like a little trail around the outside of it where the little kids are. So it can always be in use. 
and I don't know what the budget allows for, but the number one maintenance of the outdoor rink was uh, getting rid of the snow. And in a couple of years, you know, maybe not this past winter, the two before, though, that was a that was a logistical nightmare, and something that operationally, I don't know if they have, you know, you can put up a canvas top or a sunscreen or something that goes back and forth, but it would be something in the long term operation of the of an outdoor pad that would, you know, probably pay for itself. So I just basically hope the council will proceed forward with it, and then when uh, the Kerr Street underpass that was supposed to be built three years ago comes up, we'll come and deal with that later. We'll let you deal with deer run next. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Kowalczyk, for your information. Okay. Councillor Chisholm, uh, go ahead. Thank you, Worship, through you. Uh, Mr. Kowalczyk, I like the comment you made with respect to keeping it an open concept and without having the charge of fees and so forth. Uh, as you probably recall, we built, uh, under my time when I was with the town, we built the skateboard park, and we did exactly that, and that they work it out for themselves, and we don't need adult supervision and so forth. And I totally agree with that concept, so that's something I hope that staff will consider when we're building it. Thank you. Save a lot of money. In Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Clerk. Next delegation is uh, Rosalind McLean on behalf of the West River Residents Association, also here to speak to the Trafalgar Park revitalization. Welcome, Ms. McLean. Council Thank looks forward to your information. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm a board member of the West River Residents Association, the WRRA, as it's known. And the revitalization of the Trafalgar Park is of great interest to the WRRA. The board's president, Craig Sch um, Schiller, and vice president, Paul Jamieson, regret that they couldn't be here this evening. Um, so I'm here to ensure that the board's opinion is heard, and here it is. On behalf of the 750 households of the neighborhood of Trafalgar Park and the Oakville Arena, the West River Residents Association strongly supports the town's recommend town staff recommendation for the improvements to the Oakville Arena, and also includes the additional investment for the, over the added overhang and the outdoor ice rink. Thanks. Thank you very much for that. Okay. All right. Are there any other delegations? Okay. Uh, the last delegation for the Administrative Services Committee is Jessica Begalki from a big mobile sign company here to speak to item four, the mobile uh, sign regulation update. All right then, <clears throat> I will now, <clears throat> if I get my voice back, I'll look for a motion on, uh, oh, I have a matter here on ASC. Where is that? The, you have on your desks, Council, a uh, variation on the ASC recommendation on mobile signs. And uh, it's the request of staff that, um, and I, I have it here, moved by Jeff Knoll, seconded by Mark Grant, that, um, uh, basically, we're, we're going to replace this recommendation um, for the one that's in the committee report. The committee report referred the entire thing to staff to work on the separation of sign distance more. And what, uh, and what staff would like us to do is uh, only refer the minimum distance question back for uh, review and pass the rest of it. And I believe that all, everyone's in, likely to be in sync with that. So. Um, the, uh, the, the first thing I'll do is I will call the, a, the admit, I look for a mover and seconder for the uh, entire ASC report, Councillor Duddick and Councillor Chisholm, and I'll call that vote now. Oh, oh, no, I don't want to call that vote now. Now what I want to do is I want to separate out item four, the mobile sign regulation update, and call the vote on the balance. All right? Everyone in favor? Opposed, if any, and the... the most of the report is now carried. So now we come to uh, item four. I'd, I'd like a, a, a mover and seconder of item four, uh, and I'd like council to defeat it, and then I'd like to replace it with this. I, I think that's the clearest way to do it. Would you like to do it a different way? Oh, yeah. All right, so we'll get a substitute for you. There's a forest of volunteers here. Councillor Duddick, thank you. 
All right, so, um, uh, so Councillor Duddick and Councillor Hutchins are moving item four as recommended to council, and, and I'm recommending that we defeat it. So I'm calling the, the vote on the committee recommendation. All those in favor, all those opposed. <laughs> that, that, that fails, and now, and now moved by Councillor Knoll and seconded by Councillor Grant, we have the substitute motion, which I read. All those in favor? All those opposed, and it carries. Thank you for your cooperation on that. Now, as I said, I, I recognize that I have a conflict on the CSC item, and so <clears throat> the acting ma <clears throat> the acting mayor is uh, Councillor uh, Lischina from Ward Six, and uh, Councillor Lischina and I will now trade seats, and she will be the mayor for the next section of the meeting, the chair anyway. Thank you, Your Worship. And I also have a uh, issue with my voice uh, this evening, so I apologize for that in advance. Uh, at this point, we are going to be calling up delegations for the Deer Run Avenue Emergency Access Laneway Class Environmental Assessment Study, which is item five on the Community Services Committee agenda. So, Madam Clerk, uh, please call up our first delegation. Okay, the first delegation is Randy Rutherford. Mr. Rutherford? Mm. No? Okay. The next delegation listed is Lorraine Rankin. Good evening, Council. Uh, I had sent in a PowerPoint presentation. I'm not sure. Do you guys have that? Thank you for coming today, Ms. Rankin. We look forward to your information. As soon as the PowerPoint gets started, you have 10 minutes. Okay. Thank you, Council. I appreciate your time this evening to speak. I'm just going to speak on Deer Run. Uh, this is a conglomerate of res residents that have come together and we just wanted to highlight a few of the points that were discussed last week as well at the council meeting. So just to give a quick background, uh, there was a laneway that was not an actual road maintained by the town, but it was used for over 30 years by residents. There was a dispute with the person, Mr. Husel, who actually owns this land, whereby he wanted the town to step up and purchase his land or would no longer allow access as it was only an emergency access only route when it was conceived 30 years ago with the development of our neighborhood. Okay, I just wanna highlight on the map the main streets affected by this laneway are Deer Run and Acacia Court. This laneway is uh, mostly used for access to Winston Churchill, to the Clarkson GO station, and to the Clarkson Crossing. At the time that this development was built 30 years ago, the layout and road system was quite different in this area. Ford Drive did not run to Lakeshore Road. Cornwall did not extend and Barrel Road had not been built. There was no fire department in place at the corner of Ford Drive and Cornwall, and there was no paramedic station. So all of these are massive changes that we are so appreciative of the town investing in over the years that have completely changed the dynamic. The original plan for this neighborhood was the farmland to the south of Deer Run and to the east when it was to be developed. At that time, Deer Run would extend through those lands, through the new development, out to Winston Churchill. For whatever reason, that has not happened at this time, and it may happen at any time in the future. We are in support of that. It is in no way wanting to limit that development. However, the laneway would not exist, and the road would run as per the plans that were filed 30 years ago when this development was built. And in addition, the cost of doing so would be that of the developer and not of the Oakville town taxpayers. There was an uh, assessment study done. They looked at various different criteria, highlighting safety, connectivity, and policies as important. 
What we did find interesting as residents of Acacia and Deer Run, and I don't speak for all residents, I speak for those in favor of the do nothing and let a future developer develop the land at their cost. But for those of us in favor, one item we found interesting at the meeting in November, numerous people raised safety, high speed traffic, go train users, rushing at high speeds along that road without a stop sign, without a traffic light, unhindered to make their trains. And the danger that this could pose to children in early morning hours going to school, getting school buses, going to you know, pre-sports practices, et cetera, especially in the mornings where we have darker weather in the winter. This was nowhere addressed in any of the assessment, even though it was something that as residents we asked to be included. So we felt safety and connectivity was not really a priority and was not really appropriately addressed in the report that was prepared. There's some different options. I'm not going to spend a lot of time discussing what they are. But one of these options is this one, which is what was recommended by the report. This option would require not only the cost of construction, but a massive amount of land purchase. I think we all know the cost of land in Oakville is at a premium these days. And in order to buy that amount of land, we are looking at extensive budget. I hear people here speaking about wanting to put investments such as fitness centers into our neighborhoods. I would agree, and I think that all residents, not just those residents on Acacia Court, Deer Run, Aspen Forest, and these neighboring streets, but all Oakville residents, if they heard that money was going to this purchase as opposed to investing in our children and our families and our seniors, there would be some concern. This was sort of what the plan would look like if a developer was to buy it. They would develop the houses and they would pay for the street to be continued through the farmland to Winston Churchill. In going through this report, there was uh, inconsistencies in the scoring. They double counted the Clarkson Go criteria under two different categories on connectivity. The air quality measurement scores was a very subjective if there was less cars this way, that way, if they drove for two minutes less, it would be better air quality. I'm not really sure that that meets my standards of what a proper air quality assessment would be. They said there would be no impact to terrestrial and aquatic species. I'm not sure if they are tearing up what is now essentially field, that there would be no impact to plants or animals. I disagree. Uh, and the future traffic volumes analysis, there was no appropriate, there was like a two day study for 24 hour period that was done a few years ago and that was sort of the full analysis of what traffic used what. And again, it was in advance of Barrel Road being opened. When you look at the revised scoring options by adjusting for these errors, we actually see that the do nothing, and remember none of these include cost. If you were to add cost, do nothing right away would be at the top of the list as well. I think that's an important point. And you can see that the option that they actually recommend falls to the middle or bottom of the list. And so we do think that council would really want to consider carefully supporting this option. Again, the criteria that existed 30 years ago to connect Deer Run to Winston Churchill does not exist anymore. There are alternate routes and alternate options available. Cost. Again, none of these discussed any land cost and this would be quite extensive and would be coming out of a budget that has not accounted for it at this point. My background is as a forensic accountant. Uh, cost is always a big issue in my field of work <laughs> and if it's not in the budget and it has to be put in the budget, that means other things that are in that budget will have to be delayed, cancelled, postponed, and I think that all of you have residents in your ward that are you know, counting on certain initiatives that are in that budget. And I think you'd have to really think heavily about whether you wanna take that away from your residents for something that a few people can get to the GO train a little bit faster. Thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate giving myself and all the residents with their differing opinions a time to speak. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you for your information. Ms. Rankin, we do actually uh, have a couple of councillors so far. Uh, Councillor uh, Elgar, please. 
Thank you for your presentation. I believe it's exactly the same presentation we had at committee. It is. And what I want to make sure you confirm is that do you support the committee recommendation to the full council? Absolutely. Thank you. Councillor Hutchins. Thank you again for your presentation. I was also at the committee when you made that. Thank you. Um, one of the main uh, items that the committee was very keen on making sure that everybody understood that Deer Run is, is, is going to be a through road at some yep. stage because mm -hmm. of the uh, uh, development that will, will occur. Mm -hmm. It may not be next year, maybe 10 years, who knows, mm -hmm. but it will. So you understand that? Absolutely, but I just want to point out, as I did last week, it's at somebody else's cost. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much for your information. Thank you. Have a good evening. Madam Clerk, our next delegation, please. Next delegation is Philippa Ellis. Thank you, Ms. Ellis, uh, for coming and presenting. You have 10 minutes. Thank you. I guess he's not here. I was going to say Mr. Mayor. Members of Council and Town staff, until it was closed last year to the public, the temporary emergency access road had always been used by the public as an efficient, safe link to QEW eastbound, Toronto's airport, Clarkson Go Station, Kristen Farm, Waterfront Trail, and a myriad of other destinations. After 30 years, we suddenly learned that we're trespassing every time we walk, run, cycle, or drive down this road, as a portion of it is privately owned. A year and a half ago, Residents were asked to stop using the access road while, quote, the town attempted to resolve the matter with the landowner. The dispute between the um, town and the landowner, unknown to the public until recently, is now affecting residents. Do not be the council that shrugs its shoulders, denies funding, and hopes this dispute goes away. It needs to be addressed. Town staff have rec recommended that you move forward with option two. I wholeheartedly support the staff recommendation. I live on Aspen Forest Drive, funnily enough, directly facing and looking up Deer Run. Some residents who delegated to keep the access closed cited a figure of 400 plus cars a day traveling along Deer Run when the access road was open. Whatever the real number is, that number also drove past my house and that of my immediate neighbor. So in that respect, we are equally affected. It is logical to assume that now we are all being funneled along with the traffic, along with that traffic onto Ford Drive, rather than the far less busy Winston Churchill. We now contribute to increased congestion and that translates into reduced safety for all drivers, road workers, and emergency responders. The decision you make with regard to the access road to Winston Churchill has a ripple effect beyond Deer Run Avenue. The town staff recommends option two. What I heard at the committee meeting last Monday was that because option one or two would ne necessitate expenditures on land and upgrades, committee members would not support them. Instead, they were eager to support the do-nothing alternative. Sorry, I picked up the wrong paper. <clears throat> they repeated several times that if in the future a developer wanted to acquire the adjoining lot, i.e. Kristen Farm, he or she would pay for a permanent public road linking Deer Run to Winston Churchill and therefore the town could avoid the expenditure. They reminded those residents in favor of do nothing that they should realize that traffic would return to Deer Run if an adjacent development went through. I came away with more questions. Whatever decision you make, it results in one of two things. Either you reopen the road to public access or you continue to keep it closed. If you reopen the road, you have to upgrade it to current standards. If you choose option one or do nothing alternative, you have to meet current standards by putting in a turnaround of 13.75 meters. 
a decision for option one or do nothing alters the safety conditions of Deer Run. A vote for either option one or do nothing creates a 650 meter twisting dead end road with an inadequate turnaround. Just as in any Oakville neighborhood, I have observed all manner of heavy vehicular traffic going up and down Deer Run. Whereas these vehicles used to be able to exit the neighborhood along a straight egress, egress onto a main arterial road, now they have to contend with multi-point turns and reversals, backing right into the tree canopy to do so. Longer vehicles have to jump the curb or sidewalk. If neither of those solutions work, they have to back down Deer Run for 350 meters and contend with two road bends before they can reverse into Acacia Court with its blind exit. Existing conditions reduce safety drastically. You manage to avoid the cost of a turnaround when the temporary access road was used by the public. If you choose to keep the barriers up, you must address current standards. The do-nothing alternative should not even be considered. The EA requires that a do-nothing alternative be included in the study. Many of us questioned its definition from the start. This study was triggered on September 14th, 2015, but the barriers were not installed until October 2nd. You did something after the study began. We were also told that the EA methodology included all options, whether acceptable or not. But just as other options do not meet current standards, nor does the new do nothing alternative and it should therefore be dismissed from the discussion. I heard committee members say that a vote to do nothing means you can avoid spending taxpayers' dollars because any future development of the farmland would mean the developer would pay. And this appears to be your real motivation. There has not been any development there in the last 30 years, and you have no indication that that is about to change. You cannot expect residents and service companies to put up with unsafe conditions indeterminately. Safety is a key reason design standards exist. You cannot insist standards need to be met in one scenario, but not in another because it helps you avoid expenditures. Whatever option you choose now triggers new standards, and that means you have to spend taxpayers' dollars to meet those standards and you have to purchase property. I support option two because I would rather see the town spend money on a solution that benefits the wider community long term. Finally, I would remind you that we were asked to stop using the road to give the time, town time quote to resolve the matter with the landowner. I'd like to ask how many meetings have gone on. I hope that council does not think that a vote for do nothing means you can cease attempting to reach a fair resolution. Mr. Hoysel and his heirs are not going to disappear. The public should be able to expect that in a livable Oakville, you will work to quickly resolve this issue. Perhaps an unbiased mediator is asked for. You must be the council that deals with this thorny issue that's gone on for 30 years, for once and for all. Because now, it's pricking many more people than a few men talking behind closed doors. It's affecting our safety, and it ripples beyond our neighborhood. Stagnancy will not allow you to avoid expenditures. Option one or two are the only viable choices. Staff have recommended option two, and I support it wholeheartedly for its long-term implications. Thank you. Thank you for your information, Ms. McNally. Does council have any questions? No? Thank you very much. Of course not. Thank you. Madam Clerk, our next delegation, please. Our next delegation is Marion McNally. Sorry, that was Marion? No? Oh, Miss Rankin. 
I apologize, that was Ms. Rankin. Thank you for your time. Welcome, Ms. McNally. You have 10 minutes. Thank you. I just want to say I'm Mary McNally. I am one of the owners, sorry, of Christan Construction and the Farm Company. My family resided in the area for over 50 years. I'm here to speak to you to consider opening up Deer Run. I first want to start by saying that when Deer Run extension issue came up, we were not notified. No letters were sent to our home. We found out through our customers. My family was not um, satisfied with what the council had proposed or what was going on with Deer Run. We were all, I, I got on the phone, I was very upset and very angry that my farm was in jeopardy in two of the proposals. So I got on the phone and I tried to get a hold of council and ward members. I also even phoned the mayor's office. No one could give me an answer why I was not notified on this matter or my family. We have very faithful customers that come to the stand and if it wasn't for them, we would have never known it would have been slipped under the system. Now, for the Deer Run Road, it was actually a road for Sheridan Nurseries. It was one of their roads that they could get their machines up and down. And this was in the 60s and the 70s. When the Deer Run proposal came in to build a subdivision, the road remained a gravel road. Then Oakville decided to keep the road there, but to sign it, this is an unassumed uh, use at your own risk. Our farm was starting, and a lot of the customers were coming along to your run to shop, and they enjoyed the produce that I had produced and to sell. As far as we know, it was a road. There was access for everyone to come and shop at my farm. And then we hear last year that it was actually going, it was only an emergency access road. Well, why wasn't it posted an emergency access road? Everyone knew it was a road. So now we are in this dilemma and because my farm has been in jeopardy because of this dilemma, a lot of my customers have only used to shop three to four times a week or now only come in one a week. We don't see them. They apologize to me for not coming because it's a long way for them to go out of the way and it's closer for them to go to Sobeys. I grow in your backyard fruits and vegetables. I supply the Boy Scouts in our area with apples for Apple Day. Since 1995, I've been showing and competing my produce and my products at the Royal Winter Fair. I am very proud of what we accomplished at the fair. They label our apples and our squash and our pumpkins, Christan Farms, Oakville, Ontario. We are the only farm in Oakville right now. I googled farm in Oakville. What comes up? Christan Farms. Everyone is proud when they come to the stand and I have ribbons and accomplishments because I do represent our community and our proudness of being, living, and supporting Oakville. As, as the year gone by and the road's been closed, we had to have shortened staff, our sales have gone down, and I have been throwing out produce in my compost. I got a hold of um, a lady shelter and also the uh, food bank, and they had been taking some of my food, but they cannot take it all, what I have been throwing out into my compost. It just makes me sick that I work so hard and that it's just going to waste. Now with this role being open, not only are you helping me and my family, but you're also helping the community to come and buy food from my stand that's grown right in your backyard. I just can't believe that the road 
is only going to cost 250000 Money has been spent worse in Oakville on little things. Right now, I walk down the road yesterday morning, and I see how it's been deteriorating. And to do nothing and keep it as an emergency access road, you are going to have to fix it. It's crumbling with water, with weeds, with roots. It's going to cost that much anyways to repair this road for emergency vehicles to go through. We have also decided long time ago, my family, that we are not going to subdivide our land. We love farming. It is our livelihood and our income. We do help with the community in more ways than anyone will ever know. Thank you, Ms. McNally. Uh, we you. appreciate your information. Uh, Council, have any questions? No? Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, our next delegation, please. Okay. The next delegation is Teresa Banky. Welcome, Ms. Banky. We look forward to your information. Thank you. Well, I cannot address uh, Mayor Burton absentee, but I will address the uh, acting mayor and uh, members of council, town staff, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to address the issue of Deer Run Avenue closure. I'd also like to thank all the members of council and town staff, in particular, Jill Stephen and Dan Cozy, for the many hours you've devoted to this discussion. There's been a lot of work and energy put into this. I'd like to state I support the Engineering and Construction Department's recommendation that the necessary steps be taken to implement option two. I've lived in Oakville for 25 years, and I purchased a home in Deer Run over 20 years ago which is on the east side of Acacia, or someone would refer to it as the south side of Acacia. At the time, I had a wonderful real estate agent. I probably looked at 50 properties in less than three weeks. In a short period of time, I chose Deer Run Avenue. And the reason I chose Deer Run Avenue for many reasons, but was the accessibility to Winston Churchill. I did not purchase on Deer Run with the hope that the access road to Winston Churchill would close. As part of the town of Oakville's vision to be the most livable community in Canada, safety is a given. Everyone agree that having safe streets in all of Oakville, not just Deer Run, is paramount for all the residents, and most importantly, the children. But safety and implementing option two should not be mutually exclusive. In the current status that we have with the road closed, while we're going through this process, there is a concern over safe operation of service vehicles, waste management trucks, large delivery trucks, snow plows, yard maintenance trucks with trailers. As in the written report, allowing large maintenance vehicles to continue straight through is far more desirable than multi-point turns or reversing, which has already been discussed in this case, has to be reversed over 0.35 kilometers on a stretch of a curving road past 32 houses and then making an acute angle turn backing up onto Acacia. <coughs> to quote from the report, from a safety perspective, the rationale is that it's safer for both drivers, pedestrians, when vehicles are operated in a predictable manner. In this case, driving forward. The driver of the large vehicle, other drivers, pedestrians, all need to be more aware of their surrounding and the behavior of others due to blind spots. Pedestrians are safer because they know how to react to the vehicles that are moving forward, and there are fewer opportunities to be caught in a driver's blind spot. Safety is the key reason that design standards exist." End of quote. I've spoken to a driver of one of the recycling trucks, and I asked him what his protocol was. His first answer was they're instructed never to back up never to reverse unless absolutely necessary. And now we're asking them to back up almost 0.4 kilometers on a curved road. 
While we're in this current status of road closure, it does not meet municipal design standards and it places pedestrians, it places the children and other drivers at a much higher risk of a safety concern. Secondly, maintaining the access opening to Winston Churchill keeps all roads in the area safer because it disperses and deflects traffic rather than concentrating it onto fewer roads. Is it fair to deflect the traffic onto other neighboring residential streets? When we lessen the burden on other roads, it's in keeping with the town's vision, which is again to quote, a safe, efficient, and integrated transportation system, end of quote. And thirdly, I appreciate that the staff has recognized looking into traffic calming measures. The common complaint of many residential roads in any city is that of speeding. As it's been pointed out in the report, there are many short sight lines on Deer Run. This becomes compounded if there's excessive speed. Closing the road has not eliminated excessive speed. Driving responsibly needs to be encouraged with the option of appropriate traffic calming measures. In summary, the preferred alternative option two improves connectivity, it lessens the burdens and congestion on other roadways, it allows large service vehicles to operate safely, and it's in keeping with not only the original development concept for the area, but also the town's goal, which has been stated to continuously improve programs and services and to provide outstanding service for the residents and businesses. I'd like to urge the council to work towards an expedited route to implement option two. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you for your information, Ms. Banky. Uh, does anyone have any questions? No, but actually, Madam Chair, just on a point of order, maybe we can just remind the audience that we, we don't clap or applaud or boo or hiss or anything, just so others uh, can be respected here. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor O'Mara. Please refrain from clapping. Uh, now we have uh, one more, no, two more delegations. Uh, Madam Clerk, please uh, announce the next delegation. Uh, the next delegation is Cindy Peraz. Good evening, Ms. Peraz. Thank you for coming, and we look forward to your information. Thank you, and I need to start with an apology for clapping. I was one of the offenders. My apology, Jean. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. So my name is Cindy Para. And I should start off with acknowledging council my second apology, um, acting mayor and members of town council. So my husband, Bill, and I are original owners on Deer Run Avenue. We've lived on Deer Run for 33 years. So we have a vested interest in what has happened to Deer Run and what will continue to happen to Deer Run. I'm here this evening to speak in support of the Engineering and Construction Department recommendation, a town staff recommendation, to implement option two, an extension of Deer Run Avenue easterly to Winston Churchill along the existing emergency access laneway alignment. At the September 12th meeting of the Community Services Committee, and notwithstanding, the staff recommendation to implement option two, the committee chose to receive the staff recommendation, which as I understand it means the committee did not agree with the staff recommendation. In essence, this means that the committee endorses option three, the do nothing approach, wait until empty subdivision lands are developed. I also understand that the committee may have had a concern with the one-time $250,000 cost associated with implementing option two, and that the do-nothing approach would be preferable. But my question is, preferable for whom? <coughs> the lands have been vacant for the last 33 years that we have lived on Deer Run, and who knows when they will truly be developed. And as for the $250,000 implementation cost coming from the tax levy as a capital project, we and our community neighbors 
have paid into that tax base for the last three decades, our own personal taxes would have covered the implementation cost. For the better part of the last 33 years, we have had access to Winston Churchill from the eastern end of Deer Run. Bill and I have raised our five children, and now we have four grandchildren. And we've never had a concern about safety from traffic on our street. Our children played road hockey, basketball, lacrosse, all in front of our home. As I said, we have grandchildren. They now play at our home. As a family, we enjoyed access to Winston Churchill to visit the McNally family farm, to access Lakeshore Road, the waterfront, and to access efficient routes into Mississauga, Etobicoke, and Toronto. Since the closure of Deer Run, we no longer have that access, and it's more than just inconvenience. It's challenging on several fronts. We now find that traffic is congested on Ford Drive from Aspen Forest to Kingsway, presumably as drivers look for alternate routes to access Royal Windsor, yes, the Clarkson Go Station, Lakeshore Road, and the QEW. For those of us who live in the community and work elsewhere within the GTA, the rerouting and additional traffic adds to our commute, decreases productivity. Since the road closure and the relocation of OTMH, area residents have expressed concerns over efficiently accessing emergency medical services. Safety concerns have been identified with respect to service vehicles, such as recycling trucks and snow plows, with negligible room to safely negotiate a turnaround at the road closure. And as for the McNally family, they operate and have operated Kristen Farms as a family for almost 50 years on Winston Churchill. They're Oakville residents too. I cannot imagine how significantly this road closure has impacted their livelihood. A consideration could be to remove the current barriers and return our previous status quo access to Winston Churchill. But for the varied reasons I've presented, and especially in consideration of the due diligence and expert opinion contained within the town staff report, I urge town council to accept, accept the staff recommendation as presented to the community services committee and implement option two, an extension of Deer Run Avenue, easterly to Winston Churchill Boulevard along the existing emergency access laneway. This would be consistent with the goal of community sustainability, also as presented in the staff report. A safe, efficient, and integrated transportation system for the movement of people and goods through and within the town. It's vital to the economic, social, and environmental sustainability of the community. This would be good for our community. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Para. Um, is there, are there any questions from council? No? Thank you very much for your information. And we have one last delegation, Madam Clerk. The last delegation for this matter, Stephen Ellis. Welcome, Mr. Ellis. You have 10 minutes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, Mrs. Mayor, councillors, town staff. My name is Stephen Ellis, and I live at 378 Aspen Forest Drive, directly across from Deer Run Avenue. My family and I have lived in the neighborhood for over 20 years and have been regular users of Deer Run Avenue to access Winston Churchill Drive. I am here to support the staff recommendation to reopen Deer Run Drive access to Winston Churchill per option two as presented by staff for the following reasons. Firstly, it's time that this issue was dealt with. The matter has been unresolved ever since the subdivision was put in. It has been kicked down the road by successive councils on the basis that once the subdivision is completed, the cost will be assumed by the developer. 
Early in the saga, this argument may have had merit, but no more. The issue has been outstanding for 35 years. And it should be painfully clear by now that the subdivision will never, never be completed, at least not in our lifetime. The owners of Christen Farms, as you've heard tonight, have confirmed the fact that they are not interested in developing that land. It is time for council to step up to the plate and complete Deer Run as originally planned and not kick the can down the road yet again. Secondly, I question the motivation of many of those opposed to the road's reopening. In a petition posted on www.change.org last November, Fraser Kidd was categorical in stating that, and I quote, the value of our properties is expected to rise eight to 12% according to a variety of real estate agents in our community, unquote. The current petition now makes no mention of property values, but places the emphasis on the safety of their children. But Deer Run was always intended to be a through road, and until recently was used as one without incident. To the best of my knowledge, all the residents on Deer Run knew that fact when they purchased their homes. They had the option not to if, if they thought their children's safety was an issue. To claim now that, that their children's safety is their primary concern is, I believe, a diversion. But if safety were an issue, it is the responsibility of this council to consider the safety of the wider community. Numerous studies, including studies done by the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation, the California Department of Transportation, and many others, have demonstrated that cul-de-sacs and open loop street designs accrue significant benefits to those who live on them, but at the expense to the safety of those in the surrounding community. Deer Run's closure limits the options for ingress and egress into the neighborhood, forcing local traffic through pinch points, resulting in greater traffic congestion on minor and major arterial roads, and e increased traffic and pedestrian cost conflicts at key intersections. We are experiencing that already on Ford Drive at Aspen Forest, Cornwall, and Royal Windsor. If safety is a factor in your deliberations, it would argue for you to reopen Deer Run, not keep it closed. I know some members of council must be asking why they should approve staff's recommendation on a minor issue in east-southeast Oakville, which will require the expenditures of scarce resources. As members of this community, and as a taxpayer, we expect this decision to be given the same consideration as, say, the proposed Trafalgar Park redevelopment project. Your decision should be based on the merits of the proposal put forward to you by staff and not some other agenda. It may not be sexy, but appropriate road infrastructure is essential in building livable communities. This is one of them. As a resident of this community, it is hard not to conclude sometimes that council generally treats East Southeast Oakville as an afterthought. Bus service was recently scaled back in our neighborhood, despite the increase in the 2016 transit budget to better serve residents, presumably elsewhere. At the Administrative Services Committee last week, where this is, the issue before you was, uh, was discussed, the budget for the Trafalgar Park redevelopment project was proposed to be increased by $3 million a fraction of which is being asked for here. So clearly, the money is available. The question is whether there's an intent to spend it on something other than signature projects. I should also point out, uh, pursuant to other delegations tonight, that we neither have access to rec quality recreational facilities, such as swimming pools and indoor gyms available, that are available in other parts of this town. Fairness requires that whole count, the whole council show some interest in this neighborhood and reinvest some, albeit modest, 
capital in it. Access to Windsor Churchill, Churchill via Deer Run was part of the overall plan for this area, along with the barrel and forward drive extensions. After 35 years, it is time for that plan to be completed as originally intended. Waiting for the subdivision to be finished will condemn this neighborhood to another 35 years of unfinished business. Some have argued that safety should be a consideration in your deliberations. I agree. Safety, though, would cause you to reopen Deer Run, not keep it closed. Finally, rejecting the staff recommendation without due consideration and a valid explanation will send a message that the consultative process that was followed was a sham. And while there seems to be plenty of money for signature projects, there is no interest in investing in basic infrastructure. I urge you all to vote in favor of staff recommendation. It's time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Is, are there any questions for our delegate? Yes, Councillor Robinson. Ma Madam Chair, not of the delegate. Thank you, sir, but I will have a question of staff, if that's possible. I just want to finish. There's no questions for Mr. Ellis. Thank you, sir. Councillor Robinson. Yes, thank you very Go much. Ahead. Uh, I don't know who to ask this question of, but I heard the lady from the farm expressing a lot of sadness and concern about the fact that they had no idea that this application was moving forward in any direction. Is, is that correct? Why would they not have been made aware of this? Councillor Robinson, it is outlined in the uh, of the staff report of the notice area that was provided. Uh, there were notices both in the in the paper. There were also, as noted in the report, uh, mail out to residents within the stakeholder group, and a drop off was uh, undertaken as well in that area. And the area of the notice is shown actually on uh, uh, I think it was Appendix A of the original staff report, and it included the farm as well within that area. So, can you confirm that the farm then would have received some of this? Advice. It, it, based on the report, it would have received a uh, drop-off um, at the house. That's the way the notice was conducted, as well as there was notices in the paper, which may have been misgranted, yes. but there was a drop-off at the, the properties. So. Thank, thank you. Councillor Giddings. Thank you very much. Through you, uh, some questions for staff, if I could. I don't know whether Mr. Cozy or Ms. Stevens or... Uh, would be better off for this. I have a number of questions about the the costs and some of the uh, concerns that have been expressed. Uh, we've heard that the cost of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars would complete the project. My understanding is that we don't include any land acquisition costs on that for obvious reasons. Uh, through you, uh, acting mayor. <laughs> Sorry, uh, that's true. We did not include land costs in the EA for obvious reasons. So the 250 is just the civil cost to uh, widen the road and complete it uh, to a reasonable width to establish it as a municipal roadway, uh, 250,000. But we would have to acquire land from uh, Mr. Hoyso. All right, and now there was a comment about resolving the issue with the land order uh, being the reason for the delay. Was that the reason, or was it the EA process that was had gone through? I'm not sure I understand the question. Our EA uh, took us about a year to complete. Um, I believe there were discussions in the past. I was not involved within these discussions, but there were discussions with the property owner to see if the town could acquire that land. But not cur not currently. Not through no, this not, process. not during the EA process. In terms of what happens to the EA at this point, it just it just sits there as a as a living document. Okay, that's a that's a fair question, Councillor Giddings. If Council this evening ratifies the decision that was made by committee last week, the um, the EA would be received only, which means that it acts as basically a background study that this council or staff could use uh, in the future as reference. Um, the second recommendation, which was not approved last week, 
in our staff report was to, fight, was to issue the notice of completion. That triggers what we would call a filing of the EA. And if you, would, if you had approved that or if council approved that motion tonight, uh, the EA would be deemed uh, complete, uh, would be posted for the public record. Uh, people that opposed um, the way it was done could uh, appeal and issue a part two order request to the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. Uh, but because you, because committee did not approve that, the, 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 the EA has no standing uh, as far as it being filed provincially. So um, this council is free to implement at its, at its, its desire to implement any of the options other than option two or three that were outlined in the EA. So it that, doesn't time out, it doesn't? It, will, it would time out after five years. After five. Uh, but because you, you're not actually filing the notice, I don't know if that timeline applies. I'd have to get back to you on that. But all the, all the options, uh, one, uh, all the various options under one and the do nothing are what we would call Schedule A plus projects under the Class EA. You don't need an EA to approve those. You only needed the EA to, to support option two or three. Fair enough. Cur the current setup of the road, do we have other uh, thoroughfares in Oakville that are similar to that? Uh, yes, we do. Um, there are uh, other dead ends uh, in the town of Oakville. Um, there are one that comes to mind that's in the approximate vicinity of this one would be Bel Air Drive. Uh, Bel Air Drive is a dead end with what I would call a hammerhead treatment where the boulevards are just paved with asphalt and um, uh, service vehicles would be able to turn up onto the boulevard, do a three or four point turn to turn around. Um, this is not common, but it's not the only example of its case in town. So on those other roads, do the vehicles do the three, four, seven point turn or do they, they drive up? They, they do whatever they need to do to get out. All right. Uh, there was one of the other presenters talked about uh, an incorrect math or double counting in terms of air quality and aquatic species and traffic volumes and they had a revised score. I take it that was done by the residents? I believe so. And is that methodology, was our methodology sound on that or is it interpretation? Just curious in terms of how we can have a different ranking. Well, uh, uh, criteria is, is it can be subjective at times. Um, but I can tell you this, the, the EA was conducted by our own staff. We're, we're licensed practitioners in this business. This isn't the first uh, environmental assessment we've conducted. We've conducted many, and this was a fairly straightforward one, though I'd admit a unique one. Um, we would stand behind the EA as it uh, was prepared. Um, um, you know, the, the issues that the residents brought up, there are points that they could bring to the, uh, to the attention of the minister if this EA was filed and, and, and we posted the notice of completion and they could bring those uh, concerns to the minister and then the minister would decide whether or not we followed the appropriate process or if there was a problem. But we, we would stand behind the engineering analyses that were carried out for the EA. All right, one last question, then I'll let my councillor colleagues jump in. My apologies. Uh, so the land would have to be acquired at additional cost to the 250 k and then that would have to go to the 10-year forecast. It couldn't be built immediately. That would have to be put into a formal uh, budget request or forecast. Um, Yes, so if the EA was, uh, was uh, if we posted the notice of completion, um, that means that the preferred recommendation is option two, and that means that we would program it into the capital forecast, and it would compete with other tax levy-based projects, uh, and uh, somehow or someday it would be programmed into the forecast when uh, uh, the budget committee saw fit to approve that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Giddings. Uh, Councillor Grant. Thank you. Actually, uh, thanks to Councillor Giddings for uh, asking a lot of the financial questions. Uh, the, the extra cost on top of the 
well, the quarter of a million dollars was uh, a concern of mine last week. Also, um, we heard some comments about access to the street. Now, please, just for my own memory, can you restate the emergency services ever say that there is going to be a problem uh, accessing Deer Run? Uh, no, I think we, we mentioned that at the uh, committee last week. I just wasn't sure if I misheard that or not. And also, uh, a lot of these service vehicles, trash pickup and things like that, would be using the access road? No. No, they, they, would, they would be servicing it as they are servicing it today. Okay. All right. Thank you. Councillor Hutchins. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cozy, I have a, just a couple of questions. We heard about safety. Uh, a lot of safety about vehicles backing up uh, and, rever and reversing. That, I just want to make it clear, that's what's happening today with the, the garbage trucks and the, and the snow plows? Uh, Councillor Hutchins, my understanding is that the Roads and Works Operations Department uh, may be using different types of equipment to plow it. I know it would be challenging for a large uh, salter vehicle, which is essentially the big uh, dump truck with the plow blades attached it would they would have to back out uh, so what they're using is one of, I believe they're using one of the traffic pickup trucks when they have to apply salt to the roadway in terms of plowing the roadway I think they're using some either smaller vehicles with blades or potentially even a front end loader or a, or a tractor that that it has a little bit more mobility that they can they can maybe make that turn at the end it might be several points but uh, it's not certain. Certainly, we're trying to avoid using the big dump truck with the plow attached for that section of road. Okay, so what you're saying is they're, they're, they are mobile vehicles that are easy, more easily getting back, either backing up or turning around. Uh, what about um, that road is supposed to be for emergency use? I mean, that's what originally it was for. What about providing them with a key to the thing so they just continue th on through as uh, emergency vehicles so they can plow the emergency road in case it also, in which case they wouldn't need to back up at all? Councillor Hutchins, that is a good question, but um, the, I, I, my understanding is Roads and Works has indicated that they are capable of plowing the roadway and salting it to a reasonable standard in its current condition. They would like to see um, some type of a hammerhead or even the small cul-de-sac would be preferable to the operators, um, but that they can, you know, get the job done as is required. So that really doesn't answer your question. I guess they could and they could continue and they could plow the, uh, the laneway, but uh, I, I don't know if they need to as a, to make things easier for them. Well, the reason I ask is it's supposed to be an emergency access road, so if it's not being plowed, or is it being plowed? Well, I believe it would have to be plowed to maintain some reasonable level of access, but it may, it's not going to be plowed to the same level as the roadway. Uh, our, our fire trucks and you know, emergency vehicles, they're quite large and they can get through uh, in you know, worse conditions than let's say you and I driving our small car. Uh, so it would be plowed from time to time and maybe in that particular case if there was an extremely large snowfall they may see the benefit of opening the, uh, the gate and going through. But typically they won't be plowing the laneway on, on as frequent a, a, a basis as they would the roadway. Okay, I see Mr. Green also wants to weigh in on this. Uh, through uh, Madam Chair, uh, the fire department actually has a number of accesses, albeit this is probably the longest one they have, that during the winter when the snows are heavy, they will check them periodically to see if roads and works should go in on a proactive basis to clear it. Otherwise, as Mr. Cozy said, sorry about that, um, they, um, you know, the fire trucks are easily maneuver down through there. I'll fix my microphone now. I have one last question, Mr. Cozy. Um, as I understand it, if we uh, approve what the staff originally wanted, the EA would be accepted. Um, but anybody who objected to it could apply to the minister to... If you ratify what committee approved last week, the EA is simply received. It doesn't have any standing. 
I understand. So there are no, there, there, there would be no ability to object for something that wasn't filed. Okay. That would only happen if you approve the recommendation to issue the notice of completion. Okay. Just, just as a matter of interest, how long does the minister usually take to answer such issues? When it's well, <laughs> um, typically it can take upwards of a year. Um, I can't speak for the minister um, in this particular case exactly how long it would take, but uh, generally, the uh, it's you know in my experience and my networking in the province, it takes about a year for the minister to issue a decision. Sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor uh, Hutchins. Uh, Councillor Adams. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Cozy, I just wanted to verify with you, after the meeting last week, you suggested a clarification of the motion that was passed, uh, which would have been to add, uh, following the first part of the motion that was passed, a second item that would say that the current configuration of the existing dead-end treatment of Deer Run Avenue remains status quo until such time that a future development application for the lands to the east requires the extension and connection of Deer Run Avenue to Winston Churchill Boulevard. Um, that was merely a clarification as I understand it and uh, the motion that was passed by committee would in fact have the same uh, end result. Is that correct? Th that's correct. It was. I was just interpreting what committee w uh, voted on last week and I thought if they wanted to sort of complete the story um, you would add that recommendation in just to make it clear that the road would remain status quo. But I would, again, and I, and I said this earlier, and I don't know if you picked up on it, staff interprets status quo, um, or some people are referring to the do nothing, as really any of, any of the um, uh, cul-de-sac options. I mean, at the end of the day, if Roads and Works tells us we had uh, an extremely bad winter coming up this year, and they had some difficulty, um, I think um, you know we would be compelled to say we need to carry out some minor improvements to the end of the road to make the turnaround a little bit easier. So um, I wouldn't rule out an option like 1A that doesn't require any land. Um, yes, it's not the standard cul-de-sac, but we have non-standard dead ends and cul-de-sacs in the town. Uh, I would re I would suggest to you that that the status quo means potentially carrying out that improvement one day okay. in the future. So uh, it would create some leeway for you by not adding that particular item in. That's correct. Thank you. Any other questions? No? I, I need a motion to approve the recommendations of the Community Services Committee meeting uh, dated September 12, 2016. Moved by Councillor Adams, seconded by Councillor Elgar. Uh, call the question. Everyone in favor? Yes. Uh, please note that uh, the mayor is not uh, in council and has um, indicated a, uh, um, a conflict and is not voting for this. Uh, so it is carried. Thank you very much. So we need to find the mayor. Oh, okay. So let's recess for five minutes uh, and then we'll return back. Oh, actually, <laughs> your worship is uh, in the council chamber. Thank you very much. Thank you, you did great. All right, Council, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to direct your attention to the first discussion item on the agenda this evening, the Regional Representation Report from the Clerk's Department. Is there discussion or questions? Councillor Knoll. I just want to give you a motion to approve the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Is there a seconder? Councillor Adams, thank you. Um, uh, shall I put the vote? All in favour? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Uh, I want to single out every member of council who helped uh, over the long years that this has taken. This goes back a whole council term, and we've, we've worked diligently and cooperatively together, not only among ourselves, but also with our neighbors in Halton. 
many of you know that other regions are having fractious disputes over adjusting representation. And it speaks very well for the cordial relationships that we have in Halton with the other communities of Halton, that this has been done in, uh, in so agreeable a way. Uh, it, it passed overwhelmingly last week at the region, and, uh, and I think we've, we've really found our groove in Halton in terms of knowing how to work together for the good of the people. So thank you, everybody, for that. Now I'd like to direct your attention to item two, the Lakeshore Road Bridge Rehabilitation at 16 Mile Creek, the update and funding approval. Are there questions? Or discussion, or motions, or Councillor Grant. I'll uh, move the staff recommendations. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Yes. Councillor uh, Giddings is seconding. Councillor Chisholm is questioning. Or all right then. <laughs> all right. So Councillor Giddings. Uh, you can be the first to question the uh, youthful looking Mr. Cozy. You're the third person that said that today. Thank you. <laughs> it's very That's pronounced. The way I comb my hair. <laughs> it's good news if working for, for us uh, doesn't it's age making me prematurely. <laughs> I'll try my best not to change that youthful look. Uh, I think the report is fairly clear. It, uh, it's work that needs to be done. And obviously, I'll, I'll support that. I guess my concern is I've got a, a few battle wounds over the past couple of months, <laughs> whether it be uh, the provincial rebuilding of the Trafalgar Road overpass, not quite being uh, done when we were expected, expecting or having it promised, and our current uh, status of the Trafalgar work that's going to be delayed by 60% of the original forecast in terms of timing. And so uh, I know that it's difficult to make a promise to us that it will follow the 12 months or 13 months. Uh, is there anything we can put in contracts or ask for constant activity? Because I'm sure that I speak for uh, my friends to the West that on a daily basis we get updates in terms of work that tumbleweeds blowing down the road. And uh, given the, the important access to downtown and the rest of the town, uh, is there anything we can do with this? Well, through you, Mayor Burton, those are excellent questions, Dave, uh, Councillor Giddings. Um, I, did, I, do, I would like to say that I, I did speak with uh, Tim Dennis today uh, to, to speak specifically about the, um, the status of their project on, on Trafalgar. Not, not the bridge project, but the, the, the sewer work on Trafalgar south of Cornwall and the work on Randall Street. And they, you know, he admits they've, you know, their contractors let them down, um, but they have uh, worked out a plan where they've added an additional crew. They totally expect to be out of there as well before the end of the year, uh, and, and, and meaning before the end of the year, not, not Christmas Eve. Um, that's that's the latest and greatest information I had today yeah, because I've been I've been ex concerned myself because obviously we're planning to close the road at Lakeshore Road and you know we don't we would not like to uh, uh, to, to 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 have. No, I appreciate that. that. My intent isn't to hijack the yeah, yeah, discussion yeah, no, away no. from the bridge; it's just to use it as an example. So, so well, in our case, in our you do have the mayor worried that we've wandered way off uh, the agenda here. <laughs> But to answer your question specifically, we are looking, we, we're not tendering this out uh, uh, as early as we had planned to because now the abutments have to be designed and the micro piles have to be designed. Um, so we'll be tendering this project now towards the end of October and awarding it later in November. Uh, during this time, we're going to try and determine what we can do to accelerate any, any means we can to accelerate the project which means working on Saturdays, working extended hours. My, uh, our colleagues at the, uh, at the consulting firm have, have reminded me though that a lot of the works associated with the bridge, critical path, won't allow you to work uh, longer than certain shifts because things have to be sort of cure before you can do the next thing. But certainly there there's, has to be opportunities for us to be able to work longer hours than is the norm. And, uh, 
and I'm going to look to try and do that and seek this council's support to extend the working time and hours and working on Saturdays. And I'm willing even to go Sundays if this council was uh, willing to do that. But uh, we'll have to see how the contractor uh, bids this, what the schedule is, and then we'll make those adjustments as we go forward. I appreciate your feedback. I, I also appreciate the complexity of the project, but just the absolute importance of the road. We just have to remember it. Thanks. <laughs> Through you or your worship. Um, a couple questions. When this starts in January and the diversion of traffic, is Rebecca Street Bridge going to be completed for that, uh, that transfer of, of traffic to the, uh, that bridge? Thank you, Mayor Burton. The, the, the bridge itself, there's no active work going on on top of the bridge. What you're seeing is the temporary sanitary sewer right. connection that's placed on top of the bridge and they've barricaded off the center lane. Uh, to, uh, to house that. Um, my understanding is that work will be done uh, and the bridge will be available to us as it's okay. part of the detour. Good. I'm hoping that happens. <laughs> the other, uh, the life expectancy of this new bridge we're putting in, what is the, what is the anticipated life expectancy? The design life cycle for the, we're essentially putting a full new upper structure and that would have a design life expectancy of 75 years, but that doesn't mean that we won't need to do anything to it in the 75 years. You still have to go in and rehabilitate. It's just like a home. You buy a home, it has a life cycle of maybe 100 years, uh, some longer than others, uh, but you have to replace the roof, you have to replace the windows, you've got to repave your driveway. And, and, and so th those types of things, like the deck being rehabilitated, new railings, there'll always be work occurring, but the new design life of that structure would be about 75 years. And that was one of the reasons why we're recommending, let's go forward with the abutments, because we're, we're going to the, to the trouble of putting in this brand new structure at the top, on top of abutments, which may only have a remaining design life of 20 to 25 years. And I guess that's my, my next question, is looking at the, the financials of 6.7 that you're asking for, now we're originally, uh, now you're at 10.5, so it's a $3.3 million increase, and so that would be in consideration of the pilings and, and abutments going into the bridge? Yes, and a contingency to address um, changes that we're going to have to make because, as you, as you know, we're not making final decisions on the street furniture and the street lights until after this project's awarded. So then we're going to have to resolve these issues. There may be some redesign work that's required, mm -hmm. and we'll have to move quickly after this project started to address that. Mm -hmm. And my last question uh, with respect to the timing. In your report, it originally said January to September, and my colleague, Mr. Giddings here, uh, indicated it's going to, going to be 12 months. So I think we want to make sure when our communication, what we're telling our residents, that it's January, December, rather than January to possibly, our last statement was September. So we're looking January to December, with possibly with some override in 2018. Yes. But, um just to be clear, the, the, the project will likely start later in January now because we won't be able to award the contract till the end of November. I, I think it will be very difficult for us to expect the contractor to mobilize immediately after the, the Christmas shutdown. Uh, I expect the contractor to be mobilizing later in January, starting the work. We, uh, you know, uh, we will get at it by demolishing the structure. I've, sit, I've sat down with Susan Johnston, who's here tonight from the BIA. Um, and explain that the, um, the, the schedule will extend past the original uh, exp expectation of completing in September. We truly believe, if everything goes right, that will be done uh, in advance of Christmas. Uh, I'm leaving myself a little bit of wiggle room uh, uh, because, you, you know, I don't know what I don't know. And there's always something that could go wrong. And, um, you know, but our, our intent is to have at least have the bridge open if there's some minor works that carry over. Maybe the street lights don't get installed on the bridge. Uh, maybe, maybe you know, some features don't get added in until the early spring uh, over the course of a few weeks. But we'd like to get that bridge open before Christmas. And just to comment, Your Worship, this is major impact for the downtown, and not just for the residents, in which we'll hear a lot about. It's also our, our downtown on both sides of the, of, the, of the river. It's going to be a major impact for one-year closure. And 
what my strong suggestion is that communication from the town and from council is very clear and giving timing uh, projections as projections, not necessarily cast in stone, but keeping them apprised on a week by week basis because it's going to be very, very difficult at this point in time. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hutchins. Yes, and I was wanting to echo, uh, echo my colleagues' uh, points here. Uh, just to make it clear for people who are watching, uh, Navy Street will become two-way and to make it easier for traffic and all those things will be done ahead of time, I take it. Yes, they'll be done before the end of the year, Councillor. Alrighty then, it's moved and seconded. Shall I put the vote? All in favor? Opposed to Finney, and that is carried. We have no uh, confidential discussion items. We have no advisory committee minutes. You've had your information items circulated electronically and your status of outstanding issues. Uh, now we come to uh, note new business, and I understand there's a notice of motion from, uh, well, Councillor Hutchins, would you like to explain? Yes, thank you. Um, I, I, this is a somewhat complicated thing where I'd like to have a notice of motion to add to your uh, uh, proclamation, which you already have, uh, it's preceded me, so to speak, and also I'd like to then have the procedures waived so we could, council could uh, act on it immediately rather than wait for it to come up in, later on in October. <clears throat> Uh, I was approached by um, the Vice Chair of the Advancement of Women Halton, AWH, a non-partisan partisan coalition of 20 community groups located in the region of Halton which seeks to promote the advancement of women by developing and supporting social, political, cultural, economic strategies to achieve gender equality, e equality municipality regionally, nationally and internationally. <clears throat> the uh, Advancement of Women, AWH, has requested that the City of Oakville support for the United Nations Unite to End Violence Against Women and Girls Orange campaign, which is uh, 16 days of acti activism against gender-based violence to begin on November 25th, the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, and end on December the 10th, International Human Rights Day. Now, uh, what's complicated a little bit about this, and it's a wonderful, uh, obviously, uh, what's complicated about this is that the mayor originally, back in July, had a proclamation, Orange the World, End Violence Against Women and Girls. And there's a number of whereasses in there, but he is missing a couple of things, like lighting up the town hall in orange to symbolize this. So I'd like to try and marry the two, if possible. So Councillor Hutchins has brought a notice of motion that we um, illuminate the town hall in orange during this period, and this has been seconded by Councillor Adams. Um, the gentleman would like to pass it tonight, which requires a motion to suspend the bylaw and uh, permit it to come forward. We, we need nine votes to do that. Uh, and uh, I took Councillor Hutchins to be moving that, and I take Councillor Duddick to be seconding that waiver of the bylaw. Is everybody okay with this? Then I'll call the vote. All those in favor of waiving the bylaw to consider this matter tonight, please signify by raising your hand. Any opposed? The, the number has been reached. And Excellent. Your motion is in order and on the floor, and you and the seconder may wish to speak to it. Well, I would definitely like to speak to it. Um, obviously, uh, violence against women and girls is a major issue that we should be uh, obviously against. The United Nations have designated these 16 days of activism. Um, everybody on council, I'm sure, is fully in support of this. Um, I don't know, do I read through the whereases or just you, talk you about say, it. You say anything you like, you have the floor. <laughs> okay. Well, the, the Mayor's proclamation, pro, proclamation uh, back in July asks, the, whereas the town of Oakville recognizes that no level of violence is acceptable and the elimination of violence against women must be an absolute priority, 
And whereas we stand in solidarity with the United Nations Secretary General's campaign, Unite, to end violence against women and girls around the world, and whereas the color orange has been designated by, by the 2016 Unite campaign to symbolize a brighter future without violence, and whereas the governments and institutions have a primary responsibility to demonstrate leadership and provide resources to achieve equality and end violence, uh, I would also like to add to that the whereas since it, I was approached by... Uh, so, Councillor, if I could help you. Yes, please. What you want to do is move your motion that we illuminate Town Hall in orange light, I believe. I do, and, and I want it to also to be uh, continuing throughout the years, because this is what the United Nations is requesting, not just for this year. Do you, you want orange illumination every day of the year, or only during the no, campaign dur period? No, during the campaign, the 16 days. Thank you. Uh, would you this, uh, and is that it? Yes, it is. Councillor Adams, would you like to speak to the motion you're seconding? Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate the, the work that uh, Councillor Hutchins has already gone through for everybody. Uh, I certainly support the continuation of the initiative into future years, uh, depending on the dates of the future years that it uh, coincide with those things. I want to note that other cities have already uh, taken this step forward, uh, including the lighting up of key buildings or community landmarks in um, in orange, including Vancouver, Toronto, Halifax, Ottawa, Montreal, Peterborough, Surrey, and Coquitlam. And as the um, the home of Town Hall in Ward 6, I wanted to make sure to note that uh, I certainly support this, and I think the residents of the area will certainly understand and appreciate the endeavors of Council in doing this. Thank you, Councillor. Are there other speakers, or shall I put the vote? Councillor O'Meara. I have a question, actually, just what it is we're doing. So is it just the floodlights are going to get lit up, or is, uh, is, there, is are there more elements? Like, what is what are we doing specifically by lighting up Town Hall? You're welcome to paint yourself orange if you prefer light. I've already started. Okay. The, the, uh, <laughs> my advice to council is to pass, if, if you wish to, to pass your desire to have the building illuminated in orange and leave it to staff to do it in the most effective way possible. Okay. Uh, lighting by committee has never worked. Well, then, in, in, and in that vein, then, um, if this is something we want to do publicly, would there be any uh, um, maybe lighting up the library or something on, on uh, downtown Oakville, something with a little more visibility as well? Is that out of the realm of possibility? Or is, is uh, I mean, it might be a little more prominent with people, people downtown and, and bring a little more uh, acknowledgement to what's happening. So I, I would ask that as a suggestion, but I'm not stuck to it. So if I understand you, you would like to move an, an amendment to illuminate other town buildings. I wouldn't say all town buildings. I would just say the, um, um, the, the library on Navy Street. The library on Navy Street. Is there a seconder for the amendment? Let me ask for a seconder. Is there a seconder? Thank you for coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Elgar, you have a question? My question was going to be, <laughs> had uh, Councillor Amir been successful, I would have said that if we're going to do it, buy enough orange light bulbs to do all of the major rec centers and the library, yeah, which include the libraries in many locations in Oakville, so that the, everyone will know, know what we're trying to do for those days of the, uh, you know, during the year. Councillor Elgar, are you seeking to move an amendment? Uh, I would move an amendment and ask that all of the major recreation facilities, mm -hmm. including libraries, like major town hall facilities, be if you're going to buy one or two light bulbs, you might as well buy a few more and, and throw them up. And I would ask that the town staff do that. And is there a second? No. Councillor O'Meara <laughs> is seconding you. A second. Uh, is there discussion of the amendment? Yes. Councillor Adams? I, I'd like to, I recognize what the members of council are trying to do and we're, I think we're uh, trying to do it by committee and that's perhaps not the best way to do it. I think it would be perhaps more appropriate to pass a, motion asking staff to uh, respond to that additional request for uh, lighting up other structures. Uh, the original intent was to light up town halls and city halls and I, I think that's an excellent starting point for us and and should we wish we should 
check on how much of an operational issue it'll be if we start lighting up all of our libraries, our rec centers, our fire halls, <laughs> our, our road operations buildings. Uh, we've got a lot of structure. So I think we should ask our staff to uh, tell us what the implications would be before we go and do something. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Councillor Duddick? Actually, that's exactly what I was going to be saying. Thank you. Are there any others? Um, I'll call the vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment? All those opposed? Sorry, guys. Um, shall I call the vote on the main motion? All those in favor? Opposed, if any. It is carried. Congratulations, one and all. Perhaps in future years, we can all wear little orange lights. So we're going to have to start wearing orange, I think, during that period. Uh, Council, we now have some heavy lifting to do when we turn to, I, I'm, I don't want to skip over it, regional reports and question period regarding town boards and advisory committees. Any? Seeing none, I, I bring you to request for reports, and we have a few. I've got three I know of here, and, uh, and if there's more, why well, just bring them forward. The first one is a request moved by Councillor O'Meara and seconded by Councillor Robinson that staff report back on the process for approving sign permits on development application sites, how the town communicates between departments that are involved in the process, and how the public is notified on these sign permit issues. Um, so I will put the vote. All those in favor of authorizing the report? Any opposed? The report is approved, or the request for report is approved. The next request for report is moved by Councillor Adams and seconded by Councillor Lischina. That staff report on options to allow road hockey, basketball, and similar activities to take place on local residential streets in Oakville. Um, I'll put the vote. It, all those in favor of authorizing this request for report? Any opposed? The request is approved. The third one I know about is moved by Councillor Duddick and seconded by Councillor Chisholm that staff provide a report to Council on how they might accelerate their plans to locate a pedestrian crossing along Spears Road between 4th and 3rd Line. All those in favor? Oh, Councillor Duddick. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, as many of you can appreciate, this was as a result of the untimely uh, demise of a 70-year-old woman on Spears Road. And I did want to go um, on record as acknowledging that Councillor Robinson originally had raised this issue with us um, about three, possibly four years ago. And at the time, we were advising it was going through due process. And I just wanted to um, ask for council support that regardless of whether we're going through our EA process or development process or whatever it is with Spears Road, there's some things we do have to accelerate in terms of dealing with the issue. And also yourself, uh, Mayor Burton, thank you for your assistance. Thank you, Councillor. All those in favor of the request? Sorry. Councillor Robinson. I would just... Oh dear, if they would care to include some wording, that would accelerate the, the, this happening, not just waiting for staff to take six months. I think there Councillor, it, it says that. Mm -hmm. I think it's clear. Accelerate. Well, okay. Okay, well, they let it go. I just. All right, thank you, Councillor. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, the, re the request is approved. And uh, I think staff understand the seriousness, of, uh, the seriousness of it, and they know that we're anxious to uh, rectify the situation there. Um, I would now like to ask for a mover and seconder of the bylaws. Councillor Elgar and uh, Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Councillor. All those in favor, opposed, if any, and the bylaws are adopted. That completes our agenda. I want to thank everybody for your time and attention. It's been great working with you, and we are adjourned.